Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this stream of Europa Universalis 4, where we are playing as of Dal Kanzad, also known as the Cannon Dwarves. We have slowly but surely started to spread out from our hold, which we have been building up really quite aggressively. We are now at 50 development. We have just started digging even deeper, down to a tier 3. Um, we've got our standing army. We can now build artillery, although I think that getting artillery at this point would be a mistake simply because it's so expensive. Uh, we are currently in the process of colonizing MIT, which I think is actually going to be done fairly soon. Then we'll probably go down here to see if we can block off their access through that, and then we can basically control this entire uh, sector of the tunnels, which I think would be rather nice. The other thing I've just realized is we actually have enough money now where we could theoretically colonize two things at once. We have the income for it, and I think I'm going to do that. We may not necessarily have the military power for it, but we do have the money. All right, let's see how this goes. This is probably going to horribly backfire at some point, but that's okay. I mean, it's not okay. It's absolutely freaking terrible if that happens. But if we have two colonies going, then it's fine. Delighted that you're playing U4 again. It's been a while. I mean, just like I said before with Hearts of Iron 4, I absolutely love these games. I really, really do. But you do get burned out on them. And I was very much burned out on U4. I've played it just so often. I have 2,000 hours in this game. And as much as I was absolutely adoring it, I've, I've done it too often. That there isn't enough different in just the one setting that I was constantly playing in. Whereas this is like, it's fresh because it's completely overhauled a bunch of the mechanics, a whole bunch of new factions and nations. Like, it's interesting to see how things evolve over time. I'm doing a run of this myself and it's going really, really good. Mithril worth eight freaking ducats spawned in 49. And now the province alone is carrying my economy making 10 ducats a month. Yeah, that's pretty nice. <laughs> that is pretty nice. I actually, I think a couple of people are doing this at once. If you split your army and put a cannon in, you should be able to repel the natives on two fronts. I'm not doing cannons simply because their maintenance is 0.5 ducats a month. And I don't really want to spend 0.5 ducats for a single unit. It's too expensive for me right now. Especially as I am just fighting natives. Like I said, if we go to a war with another of the uh, major powers, then maybe. But right now, we're not. So I won't. Cannons are helpful for killing natives, but it's not necessary, is my point here. Uh, do I want to keep you where you are? I think I probably do. And at some point we will need to start um, drilling again. You're just another soldier. And there's the native uprising, so let's go and crush that. And thankfully our defensiveness is so crazy high that even sieging just one of these is going to take them like two months. Thousand manpower down, but so it goes. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, technology. This is going to be the admin tech. This will put us ahead of time again. And we can now get another idea. So, this has to be... Diplo or military, because we went admin first, going with innovative. So we need to do one of these, and then next technology, I think we can go admin again. But for now, what's important for us? Espionage, no. Diplo and influence, I just don't rate. Maritime, we're not near the sea. So that basically leaves it as trade or exploration for Diplo. Or we can go military, aristocratic, no, because we're not using cavalry. Offensive could be good. Defensive could be good. Quality could be good, although quality focuses quite a lot on naval. And then quantity just feels wrong for us. Like, even though quantity innovative would go really well together, because that's the development... No, it's... Oh, it's garrison size and fort maintenance. No, that's rubbish. Um, it's quantity and economic that go well together. Um, actually, what does Innovative do for us? So Innovative would be production efficiency with Aristo. It would be leader siege and siege ability for Inno. So Offensive Innovative would make a lot of sense, because that's basically saying we need bigger guns. Superior fortifications would also make sense. That's fort maintenance and fort defense, although we don't really have many forts. Innovative and quality is that infantry combat ability, and we are using a lot of infantry. 
or Fort Maintenance and Garrisides with quality and we're not going to do naval because that is not worth it. I'm leaning towards offensive right now. Defensive, I think, will be later on. Like, the morale is nice because we can basically take the uh, plus 15% morale from that and then just keep our maintenance permanently 15% lower. So it would effectively allow us to save some money. But Offensive Ideas gives us the Leader Shock, which isn't as useful because we have so many fire bonuses, but it does give us the fire there. Prestige from Battles is nice. Siege Ability is good, though. Against Natives, not so much. Land Force Limit would be really good, as would the Discipline, as would the Army Morale Recover. Yeah, I think we're going to go with Offensive. And the other option, of course, is Exploration. But, and here's the big thing. I'm not convinced that we have the um, manpower and army size to safely go exploring. To go exploring, you would kind of need to have native coexistence for the uprising chance reduction, and then you can go exploring. We don't have that. I don't think we're going to be really explorers. We are not an adventuring party anyway. Um... The colonist right now is wasted because I don't think we'd really be able to afford it. Colonial range, not really worth it. Like, if we did any of these, it would be expansion. I just don't see exploration long term being useful for us. Are the dotted line provinces some kind of underway? No, this is just the trade routes. That's where the trade flows. However, some of them you do need to look at because this one, which you can vaguely see as dotted, suggests that there is a um, a straight crossing probably going out here and connecting to another mountain range, potentially. Possibly here as well. But that's something you kind of need to look at closely because they are a bit hard to see. I think I'm going to go offensive. I think we're going to go military. Innovative offensive, I think, just makes sense. We are the cannon dwarves, after all. Okay. So early on is going to be mostly the shock bonuses, but we'll we'll grow out of that eventually. Um, so, what do we want to pay off? We want to basically pay off anything which is a 4% interest. We could pay off some of these smaller ones, which I think would be a good idea, because otherwise they'll just keep cycling around. Bribes growing more accepted. What is the difference between an honest man and a fool? The fool doesn't know he's being swindled. funny because you would think that defenses where artillery would be good since you can build strong defenses and bombard the, the enemy. I think it's more thinking about like Napoleonic era with the artillery where you use flying batteries to shatter enemy positions. And la grande battery to just obliterate certain sections of the enemy line. The agenda of the Diet. Okay, so the nobility wants us uh, to build new armies. So you want me to build a barracks. This will give us manpower in Helsenrod. Merchant Guild would give production in Dvararod. Production's probably more valuable. But you want me to put a marketplace there. That's not really useful. Or the mages want something. They want us to put base tax and they will give us prestige. So, base tax here. I mean, 49 is cheaper. I think I'd rather do the... Marketplace, though. I have a feeling we're not going to have any problems with trade power. Ah, oh, mitt's grown. Good. In that case, we can start grabbing you, and we can send you to here. Copper, wool, iron, highest chances. You do upgrade your cannon through the right side of the mission tree. I know, but we're not there yet.
When are heavy ships and artillery worth to use by? Heavy ships is more dependent on who you're up against. Like if you're playing as someone like Britain, you probably want more heavy ships than the next two nations combined. Maybe even the next three nations. As for artillery, um, whenever demi cannon become available is when I usually say artillery. Do we have the same kinds? We do. So level 16 is when I say artillery tends to become potent. I mean, prior to that, it's purely sieging. So if you need to siege stuff down quickly, then get five artillery and no more. Now, after level 16, though, that's when artillery really takes off, and that's when you can do more damage. Unless you're playing a nation like mine, where artillery is going to be more powerful earlier, simply because you have so many baked-in modifiers. <clears throat> How much have you missed? This stream just started, yes, but there was the stream before this as well. Um, right, that still hasn't answered this. Is building a marketplace in 49 worth a single point of production? No. Is building a barracks in the capital... Oh, uh, no. Is building a barracks in Helsingrod worth a single point of military? No. Is deving up to Varavod 49 twice in admin worth prestige? I mean, it's the only thing left. Yes. And it's a heck of a lot cheaper to do. One. And we need 46 to do it again. We can do that. Also, MIT can be... Let's do MIT first. And we're very nearly in a position where we can pay off another loan, I think. So you've beaten that head back to the central position, so we're always ready to uh, fight against the uprisings. Yeah, we're beating these goblin attacks a lot more easily now. I think the extra levels in our just military innovation have really helped. Dora Vod 49, boom. Mission accomplished, gain 10 prestige. And the prestige is also useful because it does give us more morale. Good time zones, Mordred. Been a hot minute since I started watching any 4 Don't seem to recall any dwarves, though. This looks interesting. It is. I, I like this so far. Be careful now when you colonize two fronts with one army, because Dorovod 48 to 52 is a long road. You not may, may not make it in time for the native siege down. Well, bear in mind, we basically have two months to move anywhere, because our base defensiveness is just so crazy high. Especially in the roads. Caves, sure, but the roads... In fact, we're not actually colonizing any of the caves right now. Dwarvod 51, can fight you, then go back to the center. Smashed. Okay, we're losing only about 1,000 men each time at the moment. So even though we're on zero manpower, we are kind of staying ahead of the curve. All right, let's see if we can repay any other non-1% loans. No. These, oh yes, we can. 38 dockets. Done. And now we have 13. Tax income is rising nicely. Production's rising a little bit. And actually we're starting to get some trade too. Now I'm guessing that nobody is pulling money out of here. No. And we control a solid 57% of the trade in this province now. And we could probably gain even more than that if we had the marketplace in Ovdol Kanzad. Ah, good. Dwarovod 51 is producing copper. That's you. And this one we still don't know. What are you going to do? Copper is still highest. Wool, iron, all viable. All potential. <coughs> Marketplace is the best way to improve trade power in the early game. Yeah, I would say that the first thing you want to do for trade is upgrade any of these to level 2s, if you can. Level 3s, if you can afford it. Though 3 is getting rather expensive. No way, Mordred at zero manpower? You never see that. I know, it's, it's, it's such a... a difference from how I usually play.
Native Uprising. I'm just going to be running around smacking these guys down, just like, no! Stop that, you silly goblinses! Huzzah! Who dat? Kubik coming in with a 24-month resubscription. Thank you very much for the ongoing 24-month, two-year resub, Kubik. Congratulations on earning those orange wings. And the reason I kind of chuckled there is you're the third one today. Three people have earned their orange wings in one day. That's got to be a new record. I guess that a lot of people are just coming back because EU4 is back on the schedule. I think it was a good decision to do this. Doesn't beating up the goblins conveniently provide your army with some useful experience? Yes, yes it does. Okay, so Tuarevod 48 is producing wool. This is the first place that we've had that does wool. Two point. Yeah, it's, it's a lot less valuable than the copper, but it's okay. It's still worth some money. Especially when we start getting cloth manufactories. How does wool grow inside a mountain? Sheep. There's something which is actually more baffling than wool. No, we can't check here. Um, uh, oh no, the other one was livestock. But again, you can, you can do livestock underground. Just need to import hay. What is my income? My income is currently 2.7 ducats a month. Speaking of which, I should pay off another loan. Boop. How's my interest looking? 1.2 ducats a month. I mean, we're slowly getting rid of that. We're down to 560 ducats in debt now. Demands of labour. With the construction of our hold continuing, one cannot help think what could be done at a faster pace. Though it may be quite an extensive under expensive undertaking if we were to devote yet more of our nation's resources to meeting the various demands of construction, we would surely have the hold completed in record time. So we could lose 10% production efficiency, but we would get this done 146 days faster. Construction is paramount. Spare no resources. Merchant guilds request that we invest in the hold. So you want our base production up to 14, which we could afford right now. Uh, the adventurers want autonomy in Helsenrud. And the mages want base tax into our vault 49. I think this time we're going to go with the hold. And they'll also give us 52 crowns. Let's go with the merchant guild. Done. So. <laughs> yeah, development here. Kind of expensive. No! Jupecht died. Need to go and get another general. Muradin Battlehammer, better known as Lord Cucumber. And never was there a more appropriately named dwarf. He's really good with his cannons. Level 4 siege. Nice. Whoops. Let's put you in charge. Are those debuffs to construction not permanent? No. As soon as the construction is actually done, they, they, they go. We checked that when we did the previous hold. Dwarfs shaving each other is the source of wool. <laughs> Shaved dwarf beards. Oh dear, there's an indie RPG is set underground. They have cows there. They're absolutely miserable, but they do live. Decadence comes with age. State maintenance plus 100% for 10 years. That's going to be painful, because that was the capital. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Uh, yeah, so at this point, we're going to need to get rid of the edict. Reduces the cost by two ducats a month. Okay, so we need to remember not to develop anything until I bring that back again. Dvaravod is under attack again. A vast horde of cave goblins have attacked Dvaravond. Already our defences are being put to the test. Though it will not hold forever, if we are to destroy this menace, decisive action must be taken in the defence of our hold. As they launch multiple assaults, the natives are tiring themselves. Kill them all. Goblins flee from the country. Due to the recent orders to purge the goblin race within Ofdal Kanzat, many goblins from Mit have fled their homes. Which is only increasing my 
production efficiency. Ah, and we can also pay off some more loans, which will be you. I need 35 ducats to get another. Shouldn't have paid off the big ones, although the big ones are due next. So it's fine. Native Uprising, 51. Yeah, our armies are now quite a lot stronger. And we need a new person so we can get Spy Network or we can get Improved Relations. Uh, no we can't. We can only get Improved Relations because these are both level 2s. We're going to go with Thur Hardhammer. Because I don't think I can really afford anyone more expensive at this point. Wine Underground is the confusing one. Uh, yes. I mean, there are others. I need to see the um, the overview again. The hold build time clicks don't seem to work. Really? Okay, so we can now get an offensive idea. We're nine years ahead of time. So I think we can go ahead and do this. Land leader shock plus one. Wow, we're the first to get innovative as well as offensive? I am actually surprised by that. I'm not going to complain. We've now got 17.9 innovativeness already. We are super innovative. And that's making everything in the game cheaper. And I'm totally okay with that. And now we can get uh, regular innovative ideas. And I think at this point I want to do that. Oh, the mages make your ideas cost cheaper. And of course we've got the, uh, the court mage which makes all power costs cheaper too. Um, so yes, let's go ahead and do this. I don't think there's anything else I'm saving for right now. So make it happen. I mean, theoretically, actually, we are. Because we may want to do some more development. In fact, we'll definitely want to do some more development once this is finished. So we've got another, like, four years. Three years. Soft rock. It seems that fortune smiles upon us as our miners have come to a section of rock that seems to almost melt away upon striking. Our mining efforts continue well above schedule and this will certainly help with the hold's continued expansion. So this is 146 days shorter and we have a 20% dev cost reduction in our capital for the next five years. And you're right, that is not reducing the build time cost. Huh, good to know. Repay some more loans. Yes, we probably should. Not that one. These. Do I want to do the 53s? I mean, they are going to be due sooner. And repaying loans is repaying loans. Oh, these are all on the first anyway. No, I should have done the 34s just because there's more of them. That's going to be next month. Mistake. We're going to be getting some interest because of that. Or inflation, rather. And the Borovard 51 is self-sustaining. And we can't see any other territory just yet, so we can't expand any further. And there's all the loans. So what's my inflation at now? 8%. I think it's probably time that we buy that down a bit. Maybe twice when we have the points next month. We'll try and keep it below about five. What's the name of this mod? Anne Bernard. Hey, 
Agenda of the Diet, again. Clergy urges us to build a magnificent house of worship in Helsingrod. Which is actually not a terrible idea. Nobility wants us to have 75% manpower, which is never going to happen. Or the mages want Helsingrod to have 11 base tax. But this one's going to build up the base tax and also get us to get a temple. So we will need to save up a hundred ducats to build the temple. But Helsingrod has pretty good development now, so it is probably worth building a temple here. Uh, buildings, temples. Yeah, in fact, Devara Rod, both of them would be very good. Should try and get them both done, if we can. This mod has gotten a lot of love and hype of late. Good to see. Yes, it has. Like, I know it's been in development for a really long time. It was kind of always sailed just under my radar. I, I was aware of it, but there were always other things I wanted to do more. And then, like I said, I saw uh, Arumba's playthrough uh, with the Explorer Dwarves. And I was like, you know what? This is looking really good, actually. Let's try this. Why can't I see further? Because I don't have exploration and we're underground. We're actually in a mountain right now. Uh... That, that's that's where we are in the world. We are the Dwarven Kingdoms under this mountain range. Smugglers running rampant. I'm not going to spend money on this. I'll take the trade efficiency and tax income hit. In fact, once this place is built, we can probably just start drilling again. Now, how long do I have my expansion abilities? 1507. So we've still got another, like, 30 years to go. Real question is, why can't you see the adjacent tile? Because we don't have explorers. They, be they seem to become uh, revealed, like, over time. So I just need to let that proc... And that is probably going to finish this here. So at this point, I think I can go with this army and just start you drilling. Immoral prices. Grain prices are notoriously unstable. Anything from the weather where it is grown to incidents hurting its distribution can suddenly cause the price to rise significantly. As a result, one sudden change, there is a, currently an acute shortage of grain in many of our larger cities. Force the merchants to lower their prices. Not metal. Well, must pay and distribute wheat. Not doing that. Merchant guilds gain influence. Nine peasants rise up in revolt in 49. Let's stop you drilling before you actually do that. Where's 49? It is there. We will not meddle in these affairs. We'll beat up the rebellion. We'll head back home, and then we'll just start drilling again. We hadn't actually ticked over a month yet, so our morale hadn't been hit. How about using... Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Thank you, Kubik. Um, where would he be best off? 5%. 24%. 18%. Seventy four percent chance of increasing development here. So you can go ahead and do that. Because I do need money. I do need to get these temples built. But because we just had that big wave of loans coming due. And also, we're about to finish another colony. And then we just need to wait until the natural exploration triggers again. And there it is. Done. You're a 56. still think that 56 is probably the best chance, so let's put you in over here. 